Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hope and happy Christmas Eve if you celebrate. Um, if not, happy holidays. So this video is going to be about some Christmas historical romances that I read. So I read two like full-length novels and then four novellas. Um, I feel like I always hop on the novella train at Christmas, but I read two full-length novels, four novellas, and really, I think this was a pretty solid Christmas reading year. Some, I guess a couple by authors that I knew, but a lot by new authors or a few by new authors. Anyway, it doesn't even matter. Let's just get started. The first one that I read is Desert Island Duke by Kate Bateman. This does not look like a Christmas book, does it? It does not, but get, did you hear that? That was someone's door. But guess what? This is a Christmas book. So in this one, we are following Carol and Max. Carol and Max are stranded on a desert island um, because they were on a ship that capsized, but like everyone else is stranded just over there on that other island. They can wave at each other, but they don't have a way to get back and forth. So Carol and Max are slightly antagonistic. He's her brother's best friend, but the two of them have kind of butted heads, but that's probably because Max is attracted to her. So the two of them are stuck on this island together. together. We're getting close to Christmas, um, and they are just trying to survive. And there's a lot of fun stuff. They have to build shelters. They go for like a swim in a waterfall. There's a giant tarantula on him. Like so much stuff happens and they actually have so much character growth for this being such a short book. You really get to see them grow and come around to each other. I feel like Carol matures quite a bit because there's parts of it where you're like, mm, girl, but I feel like she really does mature like quite a bit. I ended up really liking this. I think it's so cute. And I really feel like it opens the door for more Ruthless Rivals books because this is book 3.5. Um, and I just felt like it really opened the door for more. This is a pretty short read, but it is action-packed and it's so fun. And as usual, Kate Bayman's romances are absolutely superb. So absolutely here for this one. Let's see. Then I have An Affair Before Christmas by Eloisa James. Would you look at that? Absolutely stunning. So this is actually a marriage and crisis romance. I, I don't really read those that much, but in this one, we are following Poppy and Fletch. They met in Paris when Poppy had first come out, and they decide they're going to get married. They fall for each other so quickly. But they in the prologue, you can see that there's a little bit of an issue. Like, Fletch is trying to kiss her, and she's like, I'm a lady. Um, so apparently, that is going to follow them for, like, their whole life. And then a couple years later, um, they are not sleeping together anymore because she just sits there stiff as a board, and it's super uncomfortable. And he thinks she's not attracted to him, and she knows that he wants to find a mistress. So she decides that she's going to leave him they're not divorcing but she leaves him and her mother is staying with him her mother is terrible and she's really the one that has like made poppy's married life really difficult because she told poppy things about like what everything was going to be like and poppy just blindly listened because i hate people that do that but poppy just blindly listened so Fletch is deciding he really does miss poppy and poppy's like you don't even know me she is starting to find herself this is mostly, to me, a story of self-discovery. Poppy is out here finding herself. She's really interested in science. She's interested in curiosities. So, like, geodes and, like, things like that. There's all kinds of different things. Um, so, she is really starting out her life. But Fletch is trying to kind of get himself back into her life. Um, and they also end up having to figure out, like, what happened. They go on this road trip together. And a lot of things really come to a head. And they sort of figure out just a lot of the things that made their marriage difficult but then they have to decide if they want to stay together or live separate lives i thought this was really good um but i really felt like in a way it was more of a journey of self-discovery than it was a romance like we are following poppy as she gets to know herself so much which i'm not saying that i dislike i just feel like that was the majority of the book the romance really didn't come in until the very end and then the other like actual book that i read is Kiss Me at Christmas by Valerie Bowman. This is my first ever Valerie Bowman. I give it five stars. So we are following Daphne, who is a Bow Street runner, and Regina, who is like the granddaughter or the niece of a duke. So they met because her cousin was murdered and she kind of helped solve the murder. So later we are in London and she goes to him and she's like, I want you to take my virginity. Um, and then she kind of offers to pay him and it's a little bit awkward. He does turn her down. He is like, I don't do things like that. So she's super embarrassed. But we also find out there's another issue going on. Someone is out to get them. Their carriage has been almost run off the road a couple times. So her, is it like her cousin or something, decides that she needs a bodyguard. That bodyguard is going to be Daphne. He needs to be with her at all times. So 
that means her and Daphne have to be together all the time. <laughs> um, and of course, they're attracted to one another, but he's like, mm, no. He also absolutely hates Christmas because some terrible things in his life happened at Christmas. So we also find out a little bit about Daphne's past. There's just, there's a lot of moving pieces. And we find out who is out to get her and why, which I actually really enjoyed the mystery. Like, I thought that it was super interesting. I really did like it but I liked their romance too I like the way that it built I like the class difference and how he is like so so set on making sure that she's okay and everything like I really did love this one I thought it was so good it's super fast paced you guys know that I love like absolute mayhem in my romances and you definitely get it in this let's see then I read three novellas that I got arcs for so the first one is the Duke's Christmas Scandal by Carrie Lomax and in this one we are following Octavia who goes by Tavy. I guess Tavy and um, Ian. So Tavy is riding her horse and a snowstorm has come up and she decides to take shelter in this old abandoned castle only to find out that it is not abandoned. He has just taken up residence but he makes her believe that he's the caretaker. The two of them ended up spending a night together um, and then she decides to leave in the morning because she is trying to go to her sister who just had a baby but she forgets something so he follows her and they have to decide if their relationship is worth saving. He also tells her the truth. He is now the Duke. So I liked this. I thought it was really interesting. I liked the story of how he became Duke, which is like there was this old family like issue or whatever, and the title was just sitting there because everyone was fighting. So he finally petitioned for it, and it was between him and one other guy, and the other guy was really annoying basically, so he got it. But there's some crazy stuff that goes on with the other guy. Like I thought it was good. I thought it was interesting. Um, it might have worked better as like a full length book because then you would get more of the history of like what happened with like him and the guy when they were fighting about it and like where all of these things go from here but I thought it was good I thought it was interesting then I read The Sin of Snow by Giovanna Sinisalachi I always say her last name wrong and I apologize um so in this one you're following Anne and Pedro Anne and Pedro have a full length book which is really good I really like it um, but in this one, we are following the two of them at Christmas time. So they are at their home, and everyone from all of the other books is coming to visit because everyone is their friend. So they're all coming to visit, and we are dealing with the fact that Anne wants a child, and Pedro does not. He had a terrible childhood. His father made him feel like absolute crap all the time, so he doesn't want to continue the line basically but Anne desperately wants a child throughout all of this there's also kind of a myth of these two kind of star-crossed lovers um and a cursed bridge which uh the bridge sits on the property and I thought it was really interesting I really like seeing Anne and Pedro together even when they're having some difficulties like I end up really liking their banter I like the way their characters interact with one another I really like having everyone together. Um, I really liked Anne and Pedro's book anyway, so that might be why, but I really liked it. Um, I love how everything played out with like the myth tying into like real life and everything. I think that's so much fun. I absolutely love stuff like that. So that one was really good. And then the last one that I read is called 12 Days with the Earl. And in this one, we are following a girl named Patience and the Earl of Beaumont. So they kind of live on adjoining properties, and they both usually go to the same Christmas party every year. On the way to the Christmas party, her carriage overturns, and he ends up rescuing her, and he takes her to his house. Um, but she is super worried because she wasn't really going to stay at this party very long. She was really just going to take a lot of food and bring it back home because her and her servants are basically starving. Um, so he kind of finds out what's going on. But the reason that they're enemies is because a long time ago, a couple years ago, um, right after her parents died, he was courting her, they thought, like she thought. But then this girl comes up to her and is like, he only wants your land. So she listens, and I'm like, okay, so this is kind of your fault because you just decided to listen to gossip. So they are spending time together. She tries to leave, and she gets lost and all kinds of stuff, like very dramatic, my girl. But we find out like the whole story of course and it ended up being cute I really don't love it when everything is based on miscommunication like if she had just talked to him like everything could have been sorted out which sometimes that is the case but I'm glad that this was novella length because you were able to like read it and then get past it like you know because the book is so short if it had been like full novel length I would have been super annoyed if that was like the main source of conflict but in a novella it didn't bother me 
All right, so that's it. That is the Christmas historical romances that I read this year. Um, I think it was pretty good. Next year, I have a couple like full length ones that I'd like to read um, because this year I was just so lazy about it. But I think overall, these were good. I did find a new five star, uh, so that's good. And I started a new series by Eloise James, which is always a good thing. So that's all that I have for you guys today. I do hope that you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.